Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So first I want to say sorry that I didn't put a video up Monday. I typically try to upload on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. However, I'm in Florida, so we got hit by Hurricane Irma throughout the weekend and on Monday, and YouTube just wasn't a priority at the time. So instead of a Top 5 Wednesday video, today I'm going to be doing a book review. Also, I have my coffee because we were making extra coffee and putting it in the fridge and storing it <laughs> throughout the hurricane just in case we lost power and we weren't able to have more coffee so we have coffee for days and we're trying to go ahead and drink that so I have my cute little love is a four-legged word mug so today I'm gonna be reviewing The Wonderling by Mira Bartok which I received through the early reviewers program on library thing this is an arc the wonderling is a middle grade steampunk fantasy with elements of adventure and a little bit of mystery and it's coming out on september 26th being released by candlewick press so to give you a little bit of background the wonderling features a little boy who he's really like a fox boy because he is a fox human hybrid which is a groundling and groundlings are animal human combos essentially and they are oppressed in this world in the wonderling we're following our protagonist who is referred to in the beginning of the book as number 13. he is a groundling a fox human groundling and he has one ear which is definitely like a fox ear you can see that on the cover He's adorable. Number 13 is living in Miss Carbuncle's home for wayward and misbegotten children, which is an orphanage for groundling creatures. Number 13 has no name and he's just referred to as number 13 because that's what he is in the number of creatures who are there in the orphanage. And number 13 is really shy. He doesn't really have any friends because all of these kids, these groundlings, are really kind of beaten down. They don't have much going for them because they are really oppressed, particularly in this orphanage setting. However, one day an act of bravery on the part of number 13 introduces him to a little bird named Trinket who becomes his very best friend and with gaining this best friend he gets a name for himself and from here on out he's referred to as Arthur. Trinket and Arthur become the best of friends while they're living in this orphanage and then they start to make plans on what they want to do with their futures because there aren't really futures for them here at the orphanage. They don't know what happens to the kids the groundlings who are here at the orphanage, they just know that once they turn 18, they assume they go away or something because they don't see them anymore. So they decide that they're going to make plans for what they're going to do with the rest of their lives and they're going to pursue their destiny. And the story takes off from there. I really enjoyed this story and I had a lot of things that I liked about it, so I'm just going to go ahead and go over those briefly. This video is spoiler free, so I'm not going to be going into any specifics. I love the themes represented in this book. There are so many themes of friendship and true friendship and what that can mean for a person. There's also destiny, as I had said, and courage, which as a counselor, I'm really big on the idea of courage and what that means for people. And then there's also the theme of identity. Who am I? Why am I here? And what am I here for? I also really loved Arthur, or number 13, as a character. I love characters who tend to be a bit of an underdog, who might be a little bit shy or unsure when they're in the start of the book, and who really come into their own as the story progresses. And Arthur really fits with the kind of character that I tend to love. There's also Bartok's writing style, which I think is beautiful. I don't tend to think of middle grade books as having flowery writing or beautiful prose or anything, but I think Bartok has a wonderful writing style. There are so many of her sentences that are just gorgeous and I love the way they were structured. I'll be interested in seeing how it comes out in the actual final product. There's also the art. In the arc, you don't see the art throughout. You'll just see spaces where it will say something like art to come. But I can tell just from the few illustrations that there are, like the map or the chapter headings or the section headings, that the art in this is going to be so, so beautiful. I'm just going to show you the front sketch. This is the front sketch and it is so, so cute. This is Arthur, or number 13, our one-eared friend. This is the map, and I assume that the art style is going to be pretty similar throughout. Oh my god, it's gorgeous! I think it's going to be fantastic when it comes out. I've mentioned how aesthetically pleasing this is. The rights for it have already been bought, even though it's not been published, and it's going to be a major motion film. And I think it's going to be perfect for that, just because I think the story will really lend itself to 
picture. I also really appreciate the ending of this book because it leaves room for a sequel. I do believe that Bartok plans on there being a sequel for The Wonderling, but the end of this wraps up some of the questions that we have as we're progressing through the book, but then brings up a few more that you want to know the answers to for later books. So I think Bartok does a good job of creating a satisfying ending but still having the reader want to know more about what's going to happen in the story. It shows that there is going to be a larger plot for this story and that this isn't it. Now for the things that I had some criticisms of. Sometimes the world building in The Wonderling isn't quite up to my standard, however I read a lot of adult fantasy. So this is middle grade and it's the first book in a series. I assume that there will be more built on to how this world is the way that it is, but I often found myself feeling a little bit confused about what the actual setting was because there are groundlings but groundlings aren't entirely explained as, you know, why they're here. And then there are also humans, but the humans definitely are different than the humans in our world, at least culture-wise. However, there are still references to things that are common myths in our world, so I was a little unsure about how this story related to our actual world. So I was a little confused sometimes on the world building, but there's definitely room to improve on that and to clarify a bit more in sequels for this book. With this being steampunk, there is room for it to be in a world that's similar to our world, but with different advances and different species or technologies or whatever, so that's not too huge of a critique. And then also, this is middle grade, and I am obviously not the intended audience here. So this is marketed more for 8 to 12 year olds, and I am 23. So, so there were some things in this book that were catered more to the intended audience, which I am not a part of the demographic. That's no fault of the book, I'm just not part of it. I think that children's or middle grade or young adult books that are really good should be enjoyable by adults, but ultimately I really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it a 4.25 star rating. Again, this comes out September 26th, and I highly, highly recommend that you pick it up particularly for younger readers in your life. But that's going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you're interested in hearing more about The Wonderling or if you plan on picking up a copy for yourself or a loved one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And like I said, comment down below because I'd love to interact with you. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. And until next time, bye.